All right, because the shoulder on the part needs to be a light press fit into the hole, and that hole is 0.88, what we have here is a piece of just one inch stock that we're gonna use, and we're gonna counterbore it out using the exact counterbore that we're gonna use on the transmission itself as a test fit so that we can sneak up on it and make it fit. So what I'm gonna do is drill the lead size, which is the 3 8 and then I'm gonna come back with counterbore and counterbore it. So we're gonna turn the lathe on. the chips. Okay. Alright, so now we've drilled a 3 8 hole in our little uh, toss away piece of aluminum and we've got the 7 8 bore, counter bore on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the lathe on and we're going to start moving this in. And then we're going to drill, we'll see how far we bore. Technically we need about 0.5 inch, but we don't need all of that to test the fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some cutting fluid, make sure that that's all looped up, cut the lathe on. And we're going to see how it works. All right, we're gonna tighten up the chuck and then we're gonna keep going until we get down to 0.5 inches. should be just about down to the half inch that we need for our test piece and it is okay now we can go ahead and put the piece back in and reverse it and start cutting the shoulder all right now we've got our test counter bore made so we've taken the part and we've returned it to the three jaw chuck here and we've got the dial indicator set up yet again in the same sense to try to check runout. Again, this part doesn't actually spin itself, so runout isn't super critical, but we might as well do it since we got it on here. So I'm going to go ahead and spin it. We're going to take a look at the runout. You can see the dial is swinging about one and a half, two thou. So that should be plenty good for what we're trying to do. And so what we are trying to do is we need to make a shoulder so that that test piece of aluminum that I had counterboard fits over this shoulder. And if we look at the blueprint, what we're showing is this is the shoulder right here. So we need to reduce the diameter of this down to uh, about 0.88 or whatever is gonna be a, a light press fit into that test piece that we made. And it needs to be about 0.5 deep. And we need to be pretty close with our 0.5 because there's not a lot of room between this counterbore and this, only about of a tenth of an inch, a little bit more. So, so what we've done is we've come in and I put some bluing on there. If you look really close, you can see right where I've scribed a line, right there. So that's one half inch in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it in and we're gonna start turning this face down. So we're gonna get the cutter set up and we're gonna start working on that diameter. All right, so we've got the turning tool there in the tool holder and the tool holder in the tool post. 
Uh, so we're going to talk about what we're doing to set it up a little bit. So as you can see, we've got this little, uh, this little cutter right here, which has an acute angle on the tip of it. And we needed to adjust the, the clocking of the tool post so that this point is the farthest forward. Because as we cut in, we're going to need to make a shoulder. So we're going to cut in and then increase it and cut in. And we don't want this side to rub. So when we make our last cut, we're going to cut in. And then we're going to pull our tool post out to sharpen up that face which is why we have it adjusted like this. Now, also, we need to have the point of this tool relatively close to the farthest outside tangent piece of this work. And so if you look down here, we can kind of eyeball it and say it's close, but how do you tell for sure? Well, one of the things we can do is we can put a piece of tool steel or really anything that is uh, that is kind of very straight and, and long in there. And what you're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this down such that the, such that this is suspended in between the work and the tool. And if it's, if it's right on the outside tangent edge of this, this body of revolution, what's gonna happen is this piece of tool steel is gonna be vertical. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera because I only have one hand. Okay, so now I've kind of pinched that piece of uh, tool steel in between the part and the cutter. And so if we come around to the side, if I've gotten it exactly on, that piece of tool steel should be vertical. And it's leaning out a little bit as it goes to the top, which means my cutter is slightly low. So I'm going to go ahead and use this method to get my cutter right on the edge there. I don't want it high. It can be a little low. And that'll help me get it sorted out. Now this is a tip that was originally I saw on uh, Tubal Kane's channel. So much thanks to Tubal Kane for that little tip. All right, now that we got the tool all set up and ready to go, I've gone ahead and I've adjusted the carriage stop here so that it's gonna stop us right as we get to that scribe line. I'm gonna go ahead and engage the motor pulley. All right, make sure the lathe looks good, nothing laying on the waves or anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the lathe on. I've already got it set to take a little bit of a test cut here and we're gonna start cutting. All right, looks good. We're gonna go ahead and keep doing that till we get down much closer to the uh, seven eighth size we needed to fit into the into the transmission boss. All right, we've hogged out a good bit of the shoulder. Let me give it a quick check, rough check with these calipers, and what we can see is we are at just over one inch and what we're shooting for is something around seven eight so I'm gonna start taking a little slower looking for a little bit better finish and because I'm doing that I'm gonna start using the power feeds so as we've done before we're gonna go ahead and advance it but we're gonna only advance it probably 15 thou this time then we'll check it again with our test fit piece so I've got one ahead and advanced the the cross feed and we're going to set the gear drive in position and we're going to put our selector to the cross feed instead of the carriage and then we'll get ready and start the next cut. We're getting a little closer to our final diameter. Uh, the last time I used the power feed, I adjusted the gear ratios to give me the slowest advance rate, 
which you can't really read there, but it's 0 .0007 inches per turn. And I was just playing around with that to see if I could get a good smooth finish with this carbide and it actually didn't turn out as, as well as I was hoping. So I'm actually gonna bump the feed rate up a little bit, give it another try and see if we can't happen to avoid using emery paper to get this nice and smooth for the press fit. Okay, I increased the feed rate by a factor of four, and you can see that the finish is um, maybe a little bit better. It feels slightly better, but it's still just got a little bit of roughness that we don't want in there. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna have to get it close to our diameter, and then we're probably gonna hit it with a little bit of uh, emery paper just to get it nice and smooth. The other thing we need to keep in mind is if we look at the blueprint, Brian's calling out a 1 16th inch chamfer here because he was worried about a stress riser. That, dynam that dimension is not critical. We just needed to have a little bit of a stress riser. And if we look at the nose of our tool, we can see that it actually, yeah, let's see if it wants to focus. It actually does have a little bit of a radius. So we're just gonna rely on our tool to give us our radius. Okay, we're getting pretty close. We're only about 15 thou away. So I've got it set up to make a cut of on total of 10 thou of diameter, so it's a 5 thou cut. I'm gonna use the power feeds, and this time what I'm gonna do is come into the carriage stop, and then I'm gonna use the cross feed to bring the tool out to square up that shoulder. And then we have Josie and Mimi. Say hi. Say hi to Grant. Hello. Josie and Mimi, say hi to say Grant. Hi, Grant. Miss Violet. Hello. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the power feed. We're gonna turn on the lathe. We're gonna turn on the power feed by engaging the clutch. And we're gonna wait till it gets close to the shoulder and then we're gonna disengage the power feed and do it by hand. Disengage the power feed. We're gonna square it up on the shoulder. We're gonna lock the carriage lock so we get a nice tight thing, and then we're gonna start retracting the tool. Alright, ran out of room while we were trying to cut the shoulder, but you can see now that I've cut in and made the final cut, we have a little radius from the tool. And Josie has some opinions. And then we also drew the tool out to really square off that shoulder. So right now we have about a seven thou press fit, which is more than I can do by hand. So what I'm gonna do is start working it down with some emery paper until it looks like it'll be close. And then we'll see where we go from there. All right, I ended up taking a really another really light cut and then cleaned it up with some emery paper. And then I took the, uh, the file and just broke this edge. And what you can see is that this piece now just fits if you get it just aligned you can start to work it down on there and if you were to press this with a press it would slip fit this is about a three thousandths slip fit which is almost perfect for what we're trying to do so we're going to stop messing with that we're going to go ahead we're going to move this out on the jaws a little bit and just break this edge so it's not as sharp and then we're going to look if, see if we can't get that oil seal inserted and then we'll be all done all right now we have our finished part Let's just turn it over a second. We have our shoulder there, which is press fit, 3000s interference with the counter bore. We have our clearance hole. We have our dust cover groove right here. And then we have our little relief right here where this oil seal goes. Now, as I showed you earlier, I wanted this to be a bit of a press fit, but it ended up being a touch loose. And you could probably put some blue Loctite in there, but what I did instead is I just put this in the vise, the bench vise, and I just gave it a little squeeze. And if you can just see, I made it oblong. So what that basically does is it makes this a spring. So now when I press it down in there, push it all the way to the bottom, <clears throat> now it holds itself in because it's got a little bit of a spring to it. So now we don't have to worry about so much about using any sort of Loctite or anything like that. So. It's all done. Hopefully we'll get some video from Brian putting it on the car.